Hello, good evening, and welcome to Practical Christianity Bible Study. My name is Tunde Disu. Thank you for being part of tonight's program, which was supposed to have aired yesterday, because but I was uh, in transit, so that's why I couldn't. Um, today we're continuing with what we were looking at last week, talking about the voice of God, hearing the voice of God, knowing the voice of God, understanding the voice of God, being able to recognize the voice of God. And sometimes as Christians, we we think hearing God's voice is mysterious. It's something that is reserved for a group of high-ranking, high officials and uh, overly spiritual people. But all that is required for you and I to hear the voice of God, to know the voice of God, to recognize His voice is to be born again. That's all that is required, to become born again. And the moment you become born again, the Spirit of God takes residence in you via, via the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is born anew, and His Spirit and your spirit will start talking one to another. And that is how you hear the voice of God. Now, does that mean people can't hear the audible voice of God? That's not what I'm saying. Moses heard the audible voice of God. Peter heard the audible voice of God. And there are people that are alive today that can testify to hearing the audible voice of God. I've heard the audible voice of God myself on more than one occasion. But you see, like Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Unfortunately, we as Christians, we spend most of our lives, most of our time, most of our energy trying to hear the audible voice of God. Uh, that is why when, when, when you say to people, uh, uh, God is saying this and God said this and they say, well, I can't hear him. Now, does that mean God is not speaking? No, God is always speaking. He's speaking to you, he's speaking to me all the time, every time, all, the, all day long, God is speaking. But you see, it takes being connected to him, being tuning into the frequency at which he is broadcasting, at which he is speaking, for you to be able to, to hear and perceive the, the, the voice of God. If you remember the story of, of the, the Shunammite woman in the Bible. The Bible said she perceived that this is a man of God. That perception there is the voice of God. Sometimes things have, things have happened in your life and in my life where you know this is what you should say. You know this is what you should do. You know this is how you, you should react. Something on the inside of you, something you can't place your finger on, prompted you in a certain way. And if you go the other way or the opposite way, when it all falls down, you look back and say, I knew I shouldn't have gone there. I knew I should have said that. I knew this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so, hearing the voice of God is not mysterious. In fact, it is part of our, of our rights as his children, part of our inheritance as his children, part of our natural things that should happen to us. Just like Jesus said that healing is the bread of the children of God. Healing is not something that is far-fetched. It is something that is, it's, that is ours by right, by covenant, by promise. By virtue of the fact that the, the payment for our healing has already been made by Jesus Christ himself. So when we talk about hearing the voice of God, it is, it is nothing, nothing mysterious. You see, God loves, God loves his children. He loves you and I. He wants us to know him, to hear him, to relate to him, just like he did with, with uh, Adam. In the garden, he wants to hang out with us on the cool of the evening, during the afternoon, when you are at work, maybe you are at home, where you are eating, whatever you're doing, God wants to be part of it. He wants you to know he's there with you. He's there for you. He's there by you. You are never alone. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So God wants you to know that he actually loves you. He wants me to know that he actually loves me. And when he said, I love you, it's not, uh, it, it's not just casual words that has been thrown out. It is the depth and the, 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 the core of his being that he's, that he's expressing. 
So he wants you as his children. He wants me as his child to know that he loves me and he loves you. But you see, many of us believe that we have to earn his love. We have to do something to have, to be able to earn his love. We think we have to spend our time, our energy, our resources, trying to, to, to please him, to, to make him happy, to, to appease him, to bribe him, or whatever we think we can do to impress God. Hoping and wishing and thinking that when we do that, then we'll be able to hear his voice. But the, the truth is that it, God doesn't, you can't, you don't, you and I, none of us have what it takes to impress God. The Bible said, even if we think we are, as, we are so clean, we're so perfect, everything is together. As far as God's standard is concerned, we are just like filthy rags. So when it comes to your relationship and my relationship with God, it's got nothing, it has nothing to do with how many days you spend in church and how big your tight envelope is and how this and that. No, God loves you and that love is unconditional. And part of his love for you and I is being expressed in him, telling us how he feels about us, what he thinks about us. He said in Jeremiah 29, he said, I know. He didn't say, I'm thinking, or I'm hoping and I'm wishing. No, he said, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. What are those thoughts? Thoughts to do you good, to bless you, to heal you, to hold you, to embrace you, to love you, to let you know that he cares for you. No one, not one of us can earn the love of God by anything, with anything, via any avenue. It is a free gift, and that free gift has was deposited in his son, Jesus Christ. The expression of that free gift of love from God towards you and I is the, the, the manifestation of that was, was the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But you see, we... As human beings, we, we've been trained, we've been taught, we've been, we've been programmed to think, I'm not qualified to hear God. Who am I to hear the voice of God? If that one is only reserved for people who are in a certain or in a particular position or particular title or who carry certain, quote and unquote, special anointing. Well, that's not true. God, as far as you're a child of God, you can hear God. You can hear God. Okay, let's look at it this way. Is it just those your children, your own natural children, born out of you and in your house? Do you only speak to those that obey you, that cook your food and wash the car and run your errands. You speak to all your children. Now, if you and I, being natural as we are, can, can do that, irrespective of what this child has done or what these children are doing and how they are and who they are and, and all of that, if we will still not hold back, from speaking to them, how much more do we know or do we think God will speak to us? In fact, God said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 11, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 7 verse 11, he said, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gift unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? If you and I, as natural human beings, will, will speak to our children, will love our children, will want the best for them, will care for them, and provide for them, and look after them, how much more our God in heaven, who, who is good, who is kind, who is loving, who is caring, who, who gave everything just for you and I. So when it comes to hearing the voice of God, there is nothing difficult in it. 
there is nothing out of the ordinary when it comes to you and I being able to hear the voice of God, especially, especially since God is always talking. He's always talking to us. He's always saying something to us. He's always, always having us in his mind and speaking to us and telling us and showing us and demonstrating his love, his care, his, his willingness for us, showing us, showing us his plans. All we have to do, all we have to do, you and I, our responsibilities in all of this is to learn how, learn how to listen, learn how to connect, Learn how to understand his voice because God is always speaking. In Psalms 37 verse 23, he said the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Some translations said the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Who is a righteous man? A righteous man is somebody who is in the right standing with God. And what does it mean to have to be in right standing with God? Simply put, a child of God. Somebody who has has God to come into his life, Jesus to take preeminence and be the Lord and Savior of your life. If you've done that, you're a child of God and you are the righteousness of God and your steps are ordered by the Lord. But let me tell you, you and I know this. Just because God ordered your steps, just because God gives you the instruction, God, just because God is leading you in a certain way, just because God is directing you to go a certain way, does it not necessarily mean you are hearing it, or you are obeying it, or you are doing it? Because you and I know that most of the time, we don't hear it. Which we we're talking that last week on the program, we said you will hear a voice behind you that will say, This is the way, walk ye in it. This is the way, walk ye in it. You will hear a voice behind you. Now, the, 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 the truth is this you will hear a voice. There's a difference between hearing and understanding, and you can only do when you understand. So just because somebody is speaking, for instance, I'm speaking now in English. If somebody from, I don't know, from my village who is illiterate doesn't understand English, yes, they can hear me speak, but they can't understand what I'm saying. And because they cannot understand it, they cannot comprehend it, they cannot do anything about it, they can only hear it. And when they see everybody say amen, they say amen too even though they have no understanding of what I'm saying. It is the same between you and God. God is always speaking. God is whispering in your ears. He's directing your steps. He's leading you in a certain way. But the question is, can you hear it? Are you able to discern what he's saying? And are you able to follow through and do as he's telling you? When we allow God to lead us, when we follow his leading and we allow him to direct our path, the end result is wonderful. But when you choose to do it your way, or you do it your way because you couldn't hear him, not because he's not speaking, or you choose to ignore his voice even though you can hear it, but you decide to do your own thing your own way, you become the person in Proverbs 14.12. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 said, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Oh yes, this, is, this looks like the way. Oh yes, this is the pathway. Oh, we can do this. Oh yes, I can be that. And all of that. But if they are not instructed and directed by God, there is no guarantee in it. The only thing that is guaranteed to end in success, to end in, in victory, to lead you to a place of peace, joy, and, and, and joy unspeakable is when and if your steps are ordered by the Lord 
And that is not because he's not saying where to go, how to go, where to turn. It is because you and I are dull of hearing. We can't hear him or we heard him and we didn't understand it. Or we heard him and understood what he said, but we still choose to do it our way. The challenge in most of our lives is that God is speaking in a language that is different from ours. God is speaking, but because we have not learned, we have not tutored ourselves, we have not schooled ourselves in that language. We heard it, but we don't understand it, and therefore we can't do anything about it. He is speaking in a language that is different from the from our what we call our mother's tongue. He's speaking and we are hearing but not understanding. Because he's he's speaking in a language that we haven't trained ourselves in. For instance, if I relocate today to China and I settle down in China, maybe for the first six weeks or three months or six months, I will go about with an interpreter or one of these apps that tells you that interprets and, and translates for you. But over time, I will start to pick what they're saying. I will start to understand what they're meaning. I will start to have reasoning, ability to reason with them and have conversation and have even an argument with them and all of that. But you see, in order for me to get to that point, I have to make it a point of duty for me to learn that language, to be trained in that language, to put myself to find out what, how do I go about understanding what this my Chinese friend is saying. Now, if we are doing that in the natural, how much more then shall we be doing the same in the spirit? How much then should we put effort into understanding the voice of our Creator, the voice of a God that, of God that loves us with everything and gave everything just to demonstrate His love for us? We have to train ourselves to know, to understand, to recognize, to be able to assimilate the voice of God so that we can be led as the righteousness of God along the path of his righteousness for his name's sake. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 tells us, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, it said, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Uh-oh. Maybe that is what the issue is. The natural man receiving not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I think we just found the key. I think this is the key to the whole story. Because even though we are born again, of the incorruptible seed of God. Even though we are born again by the Spirit of God, our spirit is born afresh. A, this, a new creature, the Bible said, all things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Even though we are now new, species that has never existed before and we're so new that our newness is in him our newness is by him our newness is through him our newness is of the spirit and the things of god are revealed by the spirit because god is spirit and he created you and i as spirit being but we live like natural men we live as natural men we live as men who are not party to the covenant of faith. We live as though we have not even passed the neighborhood of being a spirit being. Even though the Bible tells us that we are in this world, but we're not of this world. 
we are not of this world. Why? Because this world is it's it's naturally uh, 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 occupied and 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 practiced and exercised. But our being, our real self, our true identity is that we are spirit being, just having natural experience, rather than being spirit, rather than being natural being, having spiritual experience. And until we're able to flip it over and have this understanding that we are primarily spiritual being, just having natural experience, we will not be able to tap into the realm and the frequency and the level and the place where God is always speaking, we will continue to just be like any other person. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 said, But the natural man receiveth not the things of God, not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. He can't receive it. He cannot receive the, the things of God. He can't know them. And he can't discern them. So he can't receive them. He can't know them. And he doesn't even have the ability to discern them. Because those things are spiritual. Those things are not physical. They are not natural. So if you and I are going to be able to transcend this level of natural being or the natural man that cannot receive, that cannot uh, 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 know and that cannot discern the things of God, then we've got our work cut out for us. And all we have to do, all we need to be, how we need to go about it is not doing okie cokey and going around the building of, of the church. No, all we have to do is to be spiritually alive. It's to be alive in our spirit. It's to be awake from our sleep slumber. It's to, it's to recognize that primarily, primarily we're spiritual beings. And until we come to that point, God will continue to speak and we will still not hear it. In order for us to hear, we have to, to listen, not with these flaps, but to listen with our spirit and hear the voice of God that is rumbling on the inside of us. Last week, we were, when we started this, this whole series on, on hearing the voice of God, we said that Moses heard the audible voice of God when he was in the Holy of Holies. And God spoke to him from the mercy seat in between the cherubims. He heard the audible voice of God. But you and I, who are born of the Spirit, who are children of God, we don't need to go into any Holy of Holies to hear God. Do you know why? Because the Bible tells us that we are the temple of God. This our being, this our presence, this our body has become the temple of God. And inside the temple of God is where the Holy of Holies is. And that is why when God speaks to us now, it's not primarily with an audible voice. He speaks to us from the Holy of Holies, from our spirit being, from his spirit to our spirit being. We are the carriers of God. We are God. Carry, we are pregnant with God. We carry God everywhere we go. His presence, His Spirit is always within us. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 said this: But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. There is a mystery about, about, about the wisdom of God. There is a mystery about the wisdom of God. And this mystery, this wisdom of God is hidden. It's hidden for us, not from us. 
It is hidden. The Bible said it is ordained before the world unto our glory for our benefit to do us good, to be benefit, beneficiary to us. But it is a mystery that is the wisdom of God, which is a hidden wisdom for you and I. No wonder the Bible said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all of your getting, get understanding. Because until you understand, until you have an understanding, until you can comprehend what is being given to you, you will not be able to do anything with it. For instance, this is a pen, nice pen. University of Hertfordshire is written on it. Nice pen. Okay. If I give this pen to my, say I have a two-year-old child, and I give this pen to that child, that child will scribble something on the paper, maybe, maybe not, but it will just be gooby the good, nothing, you can't understand it. But give that same pen to a 15-year-old, a 22-year-old, and they will write a five-page essay with that same pen. So the question is, is the problem with the pen or the problem is, or the issue is with the person who has the pen in their hand? The, pro the issue has nothing to do with the pen. It is the understanding of what this pen is and what this pen can do and how this pen works and where to use this pen. That is what makes the difference between the manifestation in the life of that my two-year-old child and in the life of that 22-year-old man. The language of God is his wisdom. The language of God is his wisdom. And you and I, oh, thank you, old Father. Thank you, Lord. We have been given the privilege of knowing this wisdom, of knowing this language, of being connected to this wisdom and this language. But more than that, we have also been given the, the privilege, the honor has been bestowed on us to be able to articulate and speak this wisdom in the spirit. God is not hiding from us. He's not hiding his voice from us. He's not shying away from us. He ordained it and kept it for us even before we were born. He said, oh, there's a, there's a, a handsome young man coming called Tunde Disu. And this wisdom is for him. Whatever your name is, the wisdom of God is for you and I to be able to use, to differentiate ourselves from those who are not party to the covenant. But unless we relate and connect and interact with that wisdom, we will be like that man that was said that cannot, doesn't understand, doesn't know, and cannot discern. The things of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9. It says, But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that loved him. Full stop. And the most of the time, that is where we end that passage. That is where we stop that passage. We like to use it to justify our ignorance. We like to use it to justify our laziness. We like to use that to prove that, oh, we are just so far away from God's standard. As if we made it our, it is our making to, to, to align ourselves with God instead of recognizing that He he looked round and he said, this, this, this young man, Tunde this. I want him to come and sit next to me. I want him to live with me. I want him to abide with me. I want to abide in him. I want him to, to know what I know. I want to reveal the mysteries to him. 
So whenever somebody quotes this 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it's, there's nothing wrong. It's just incomplete. Especially if you're a born-again Christian. Because he said, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, now, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Then verse 10. He said, but... And that word, but, changes the whole narrative. It changes everything that we've read up till that point. He said, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Whew. Wait a minute. Those things that eyes have not seen, those things that nobody has heard about before, those things that has not even crossed the mind of any man, God has revealed them to us. Whew. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What is, what is that thing? What is that challenge? What is that situation? Where is that pain and that that heartache? What is the name of that illness that you've been struggling with? And every doctor said we've never seen this before. They call all these all the specialists and the surgeons and the, the consultants and the masters and misters and pull all of them together. They looked at it and said, I've never seen this before. They call the ones in America, in Japan, in China, in Lagos, in Burkina Faso. And they said, nah, they don't know. Where, they, I can't even think of where this is coming from. I can't even relate to this. What are those things that seemingly are tripping us up and knocking us down and slapping us over the head? What are those life issues? That seemingly nobody has an answer to. What is that condition that you and I are struggling with and it seems there is no way out of? Whatever it is, however it is, wherever it's coming from, it has no name, it has no, no reckoning, no reference, no nothing. It doesn't matter. Do you know why? Because this verse 10 tells us, but... God himself, not an angel, not a pastor, not a Jew, not a reverend, not a bishop, not a deacon or deaconess, nothing. He said God himself had revealed them unto us by his spirit. Why will he reveal it to us by his spirit now? Eh? This God too should know that we, we live here in this world and it should just make it easier for us and Tell it to us in the language that we'll understand. Because as far as God is concerned, we're not in this world. We're not part of this world. And that is why he can't speak the language that this world understands. Because then he will have entered the heart of men. My eyes I will have seen it. Ears will have heard it. But because God is spirit, the only language that the spirit speaks is the, language, the spiritual language. And because he created you and I in the same spirit, he speaks to us in the same spirit. For instance, I'm a Yoruba man. If a child is born in my house today, and the only language I speak to that child is Yoruba, that child will understand Yoruba better than any other language because that's a language that's the, the mode the means of my communication with that child i don't care if that child is born in england or china or uzbekistan it is a language that i communicate with that child day in day out morning afternoon and evening sleep time wake up time eat time play time run time and just speak to that child in Yoruba all the time, all the time, all the time. That child will be fluent and be speaking Yoruba and giving proverbs on top. It's the same thing God is doing here. 
as far as God is concerned, when we got born again in his house, in his presence, the only language he knows to speak to us is spirit language. And that's why he expects us, having been raised in his house, in his presence, in his domain, to be able to understand that spiritual language. God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. You remember the previous passage that we read earlier on. Where is it? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. He said, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. That hidden mystery is what God is now speaking to us in this verse 10. It's what God is, he, he, he's, is giving. That spirit, that same language, that same voice, he searched all things. Yes, even the deep things of God. No wonder, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard. It doesn't even enter the heart of man because they are the deep things of God. And yet, God will call you and I into his chamber and say, come, come let, me, let me show you something. Let me tell you something. You know you are my favorite child. Now, I'm going to show you a little mystery. Today, you're going to learn something. And God is speaking to you and I. Just like that. Every time. All the time. Every day. Everywhere. Anywhere. Anyhow. Because he wants us to, to, have, to, be, to, to have an edge over the rest of the world. Over every other person. Because once we know it, before they know it, that gives us an advantage. But if our ears, our spiritual ears are dull to hear, even if he puts his mouth in our ear and scream till his lungs nearly come out of his mouth, we will still not be different. So if you and I want to hear the voice of God, we must listen to him in the spirit not with the physical ears. Now, like I said, it doesn't mean God cannot speak. It doesn't mean God doesn't speak. Uh, I'm not saying God doesn't speak uh, 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 audibly to us. Yes, he does. But primarily, our means of communicating with him or him with us is in the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 to 12 said, For what man Nowhere the things of a man, save the spirit of, the, of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received. Listen to this. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why? that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. You know, I get excited sometimes, especially when I'm looking into the perfect law of liberty, as the Bible says it. Because some of these things, are, they've been there all this long. And we just don't know them. We haven't heard them. We haven't perceived them. Nobody is talking about them. Everybody is busy talking about you don't pay your tithe, it will be tight for you. If you don't serve now, you won't, God won't bless you. If you don't. When all along, like Jesus, like the Bible said. Why are you bothering yourself about tightening over cummings and, and this and that? Why you have left the most important things of the law, of the spirit, the most important things? Why have you, why has, what is wrong with us? That all we know, all we think, all we talk about is the, is the issue of, of giving and offering and tithe. Money that is here today, gone tomorrow. 
but the precious, precious voice of God that abides and lives and abides with us forever, that makes a difference, that changes the story. Maybe we just fly over it and just on our way to the tight envelope. Something is wrong with the church. And may God help us. We have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things. He has given them to us. That is why we don't need to go and beg a man to pronounce a blessing on you. You were born, you were blessed before you were born. You don't need a pastor to tell you that it will be well with you. It, also, it is already well with you. Um, but you just need to wake up and, and see it and know it and, and believe it and act like it. But because we're too lazy and too, too whatever, we just allow people to drag us here, pull us there, send us this way, just so that we can bow down at their feet. No. If God Almighty, if God Almighty, the maker of heavens and the earth, the one that created you and created him and her and she and him, if that God is so happy that you have his spirit in you, that you will know all things because he gave them freely to you, why should another man, another, man, another human being hold you to ransom that until you do this, now they become God's uh, uh, secretary? To tell you you can't see God unless something is wrong. May God help us. But that's not my topic for today. So I'll keep to my Moses heard the audible voice of God many times. He even had a negotiation with God regarding the children of Israel many times. He even requested, he said, look, I'm tired of just hearing your voice. From different things, just show me your, show me who you are. I need to see your face. He wanted to see. He, he demanded a physical presence of God. I want to see you. In all of that, with all of that, just imagine that that every morning, every afternoon, anytime, everywhere you go, you can say, God. So, what's what's for lunch today? And you can hear him audibly in your, in your ears as you're hearing me now. You and him can sit over the table and negotiate, okay, what's going to happen regarding this situation about this? And then you put your point, he puts his point, and then you agree. Even I got a point, God, the Bible said, God wanted to wipe out the Israelites. And Moses said, not in my presence. And God repented. But even with all of that, the Bible tells us that what we have now, what we have, this our relationship with God is better than that of Moses. Just like, oh, man, who has been lying to us? Okay. Peter, James, and John went with Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. And while they were there, Moses and Elijah showed up. And Peter was like, ooh, 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 I like this a lot. And he said to Jesus, look, you know, I'm a businessman. I'm going to make you an offer that you can't refuse. What about we just build three camps? Okay? You take one. Moses take one. Elijah take one. We three, me, Pete, John, and James, will be your gate man will sit in front of each of your houses let's just stay here those rascals down there god will send somebody to them but let's just stay here on the mount of transfiguration as if that was not enough 
they heard the audible voice of God that said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Audible voice of God. But in all of that, Peter said, Come on, guys. We were there on the mountain with him. We saw everything that happened. We heard everything with our ears. That, but I can tell you, there is a more sure word. There's, there's something better than that. And it's this, this word of God, which is the voice of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to become conscious of the fact that we are spirit beings. We have to become conscious of the spirit that we are and that we have and have received from God. Because it is through this understanding that the connection we have, which is a primarily a spiritual connection, will help us to begin to hear him. Every time as he's speaking, we're hearing him. And as we're hearing him, all his promises, all his provisions, all his covenants, everything that is contained in that Bible will become ours sweatlessly. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Let's get away from fleshy and begin to discern spiritually the things of God because it's in that process it is in that avenue it is at that point that his voice will become so clear so loud so unambiguous in our ears and we will have no problem we will have no challenge nothing will be able to stop us from obeying him from following him from doing as he's leading us and teaching us It is this lack of spiritual discernment which is robbing us of the ability to hear the voice of God. It is the same reason why many of God's instructions, many of his commandments, many of his directives, as they seem like, this is difficult, man. I mean, how can God say we should do this? He should know that this is difficult. It's because we're trying to... to to, uh, 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 to unwrap spiritual instruction with natural instrument. We're trying to translate what is being told us in the spirit to a natural experience and then wonder why it's not working. When God says pray for those that despitefully use you, it sounds weird to our natural ears and minds like, what what do what when god says forgive those that offend you we see that as god if only you know what it did you just want to let you you're trying to let him get away with this he said love your enemies did you not see what his name is enemy god said yeah just love him but when you see things from god's perspective you will understand that they are all for your benefit and for my benefit. And these instructions and these commandments, they're not just meant for non-Christians. They are especially meant, they are actually meant for us who are born again, who are spirit-filled, who are the so-called children of God. Although it is very tempting to think that become when you become born again, you are now immunized from fleshy. No, no, no. That is the more reason why you need to, to be alert. Because you are from a different environment. You are you're trying to fix yourself in this place that you don't belong. But as born again Christians, the Bible said we have the same mind as Christ. 1 John 2.20 But you have an option from the Holy One, and you know all things. You know, Apostle Paul, that man, I can't wait to get to heaven. I need to really have a sit down with him. Some of his, some of his sayings, I know uh, Apostle Peter said some of his sayings, but God, we need God's interpretation. But I, I, I want to ask him a few things. 
How can he say, I can do all things through Christ? Just say, all things? What do you mean all things? As in everything and everything. But you see, this verse is telling us. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, he said, But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Wow. Everything that God knows is also in our spirit. We have the same knowledge of what he knows. We have the same understanding of what he understands. We have the same spirit of God in us. That's why he speaks to us in our spiritual language. Because he expects us to hear it and understand it. Because we're the same. The Bible said in, in Genesis, he said we are created in his likeness and in his image. But ignorance. Ignorance of what we are and what we have is why life it looks like living 10 lives in one and half one. It's why we live like we're destitutes and we have nothing and we don't belong. It's, that, it's the reason why we, 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 we exist instead of living. But all that is required from you and I is to shift, is to turn, is to change and be focused on God and incline our ears to his frequency and, and plug ourselves into his power source. And then everything, everything, the, that wisdom that was hidden for us, it will become apparent. It will be open in our eyes. Every time we tune ourselves and we focus on other things rather than on God and on his frequency, Every time we allow other voices to become dominant in our ears, in our heart, in our spirit. Every time we shut him out so that we can do what we want to do. Every time we do that, it's every time that we miss out on the broadcast at that time, for that time, in that season. And that is why, even when you go to church, it is not everything the pastor is preaching that is yours. You need to get your catchers out. You need to open your spirit. And you need to say to God, Lord, that which is mine in this service, don't let me go without it. Pay attention. Be focused. Not on the, the jumping and the screaming and the catapulting and cartwheel of the pastor. No. The word. The Spirit. What is the Spirit of God saying per time? God is not trying to clean up your mind and your flesh. That's your responsibility. The Bible said you should renew your mind. You should take control of your flesh. That is your responsibility. His assignment is completed. When he put his new spirit, he recreated you. He gave birth to you afresh in your spirit. And then he, he came and sat in that same place so that he can guide you. Just like when you have a new child, you stay with that child. You look after the child. They cry. You carry them. You feed them. You change them. You do this. You do that. And that's all God is doing. But it takes being aligned to God and to his spirit for you and I to realize and embrace the truth. That is in that. And one of the best ways of ascertaining the voice of God in you is that he's already on the inside of you, in your spirit. The spirit, he, the voice of his spirit is speaking to the voice, to, to your spirit. And that, and sometimes people say, well, Tunde, you know, sometimes I hear what you're saying, but what if what I'm what I think I'm hearing in my spirit as the voice of God. What, is, what if it's just my own desire? Or what if it's the devil that's just speaking to me? That's why God gave us a reference point. His word, his written word. 
His written word is his voice. The same voice you are hearing in your spirit is in his written word. So even if you think it's you just because you had too much uh, macaroni last night, or you think this is just maybe the devil is trying to play a trick on you, just look in the perfect law of liberty. Look at his word because he will not contradict. Whatever he's saying to you in your spirit will not contradict what is written in his word. Just look in his word. Okay, that's what I heard in my spirit. But that's not what the Bible is saying here. Then that's not God. God is always speaking. He speaks generally and he speaks specifically. But the ability to hear him is up to you and I. So as we spend time in his word, as we spend time fellowshipping with him, as we spend time with our minds open to hear him, as we spend time in, in praise and in worship, as we spend time in his presence, we are cultivating, we are developing, we are growing, we are increasing our capacity, not just to hear with our physical ears, but to our spiritual ears, to hear him, to know him, to understand him, to, to, to discern what his spirit is saying. My prayer tonight is that whatever it is that has stopped us from being able to hear his voice, God will help us, will strengthen us, will empower us to remove them so that we can hear him loud and clear because he's always speaking. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being part of tonight's program. I hope you have heard something that will help you in your journey and in your walk with God. My prayer is that we will not just, like we said last week, we will not just be hearers of this alone, but we'll be doers because it's not just in the hearing that we profit. It's in the doing. And we can only do when we understand. So may God of heaven give us spiritual understanding so that we can have the capacity and the ability to do according to his will and his purpose for us in jesus name amen thank you so much please if if you don't mind share this on your timeline send it to a friend and until we meet again next week this is today this is saying god loves you god loves me god is so willing to perfect his will in your life and in my life. And all he's asking for is, would you let him? Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.